Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad. Today I'm speaking with Jun Lee. He is the co-founder of Ontology and he's extremely well versed in everything that is this really complex architecture. We're going to break it down. This is an update, it is free and he is here to make sure you are well informed as Ontology build out for their future. Jun Lee, thank you very much mate for your time. Hi Brad, it's great to be here again. Yes, many talks before and many. Yeah, bless you again. We can talk to more. Yes, and thank you for your time. I know you're very busy. You're about to start the Chinese New Year, so that's exciting. Uh, you're in the offices now for the last day before that, and I'll obviously have this recorded and uploaded soon. But Li Jun, let's talk straight into the tech. I want to talk about this because there's lots of confusion out there about exactly what you are. We could talk for hours about the complexities. We're not going to do that today. Let's break it down to the key fundamental aspects of ontology. First of all, what are you as a platform specifically? Okay, ontology is platform uh, to support its blockchain decentralized platform can support all kinds of business scenario. All kinds of means not only digitalized or digital assets parts of digitalized uh, scenario like Bitcoin or smart contract. Also include all kinds of uh, off-chain business in the real business on the different legal system, different country or scenario. That is ontology is uh, the first platform to support all kinds of scenario in, as a public platform. Yeah. Okay, so it's essentially you know caters for a multitude of needs, but we need to get clearer because a lot of people still don't understand what that means. So let's break it down to two parts. First mm -hmm. of all, this public blockchain. So yeah. that's one component. And then the other part, you have an enterprise component. So talk us through exactly how these things relate, but how they're fundamentally different. Okay. Uh, blockchain infrastructure, yes, is very likely currently blockchain infrastructure like Ethereum. Or so. But uh, the difference is we have more scalability and uh, the multiple chain network, they can do a lot of customization for specific scenario, business scenario. Another part is enterprise, or we can call them is trust collaboration platform. It's on, not only can support enterprise, also can support all kinds of organization, NGO or individual collaboration in this platform. That platform includes lots of modules like decentralized identity, decentralized data exchange, reputation framework, signature service, contract service. All those modules help you move your currently business to decentralized world. Right, that is, and I, yeah. I remember speaking, I want to just jump in sometimes, and I do apologize if I do, but essentially this is the key is that this component of all the modules with the deep with the id uh with your data and with your scoring that's all designed not just for enterprise we don't want to make that clear but it's designed more so for individual uh, customization for that one-stop shop for using the technology to benefit uh, whether it be an organization like you said or a business or an individual but mm -hmm. underneath that because i want to start with that public blockchain though that infrastructure, that open source system, talk us through that first. Uh, you have key mechanisms, key technology. That's the bedrock of ontology before we talk about the other, all the modules and all that for that is utilized in that respect. So let's go there. Okay. Um, in the infrastructure level, key technology ontology have uh, uh, several points. One is uh, our consensus module, VBFT, this kind of find a balance between the decentralized level and the performance. We have a, a, a launched our mandate last year and you can double check the performance and decentralized level. Another is we just released our ontology sharding design. That's a kind of a scannability. They can, the sharding design, that's is first one can support mm -hmm. the network sharding and transaction sharding and the status, smart contract sharding. Only smart contract status sharding can be supported. That, that can support a real business scenario. That right. is key. And just to clarify, the sharding is a mechanism in which you basically split and you enable for better scalability. Yeah, yeah. That is um, infrastructure level, yeah. Hmm. And it's that's important under, because beforehand, when we last spoke, that wasn't the case, uh, Jun Lee. You, didn't, you hadn't yet done substantial work in sidechain development, in parallel scaling, in clustering of nodes. So this is all going to really improve the whole performance of your, um, your system. Yes, uh, performance, scalability, and more important is customization capability. You can customize a specific uh, blockchain infrastructure for different uh, vertical the, the scenarios. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So underneath everything, as we talk about these open source uh, aspects, 
clearly the focus for ontology always from the outset wasn't just to provide the open source. You know, it had a reason and that was, as we're talking about now, this ability to be the one-stop shop for a multitude of different uh, users and applications so that people uh, essentially can utilize it to your benefit. So let's talk about that in the context of uh, for-profit and non-profit. What's the real deal with ontology? Are you actually a business? Uh, ontology actually is kind of uh, the organization mechanism is kind of non-profits, uh, the, the platform. But that means for those token holder, they still will got a reward to maintain that. For example, all the we have a due token, right? Gas fee, ONG. Every transaction in ontology will will charge the, or will consume the ONG, and all the consumed ONG will return as a reward for the to the ONT holders. Mm -hmm. um, so that means the organization or company, maybe the foundation is is kind of uh, this non-profit foundation, but for all those, all those token holder, they still or investor, they still got the reward in the long term with the ecosystem enlarged. Sure, and we will talk about those tokenomic factors later because that's very important to understand in the bear market with the decline in value overall. But let's now move it across to that discussion of trust. That's where all of that uh, enterprise element comes in and also the customization. So we now talk about things like data, uh, di digital, uh, the identity components, the, that framework. We also have the on scores. So why are those three components so important to these, these systems and these capacities that are built onto the blockchain? Okay, I think uh, one case is very easy to explain it. Uh, maybe you have heard some new ideas called STO, security token yes. uh, offering. Uh, actually, it's more big idea, idea behind that is ATO, asset-based token offering. That's, uh, that is next big thing, even bigger than currently coin or tokens. All those things actually is linked to the real assets or real uh, equity in the real world under different legal systems. You, if you want to move those things to blockchain as a decentralized process, you cannot only use technology, smart contract, or the crypto mechanism to support that. You also need to support different legal system, and all those legal system they need can be do the verify the identity in different areas, countries, or a different legal system. They also need can do the data exchange, and to verify the data is real or not. Another right. is you, you also need those kind of reputation system. They can, okay, who is have the bad reputation before? I, I can trust you or not. They have a credit, uh, the credit score. And also in the process, you need an electronic contract and a signature service. You can finish whole the process. So mm -hmm. those, those case need a lot of module can support the real world of chain. I see. So that's why we need this platform. Yeah. Now let's talk about that in the, in the context of, firstly, you've all built this, your substantial team. Clearly, you'd like to have some sort of revenue, I would imagine, for building this service and products for greater, uh, for, the, for interacting in the ecosystem of business, whether that be for the individual, whether that be for public business or private. So in that respect, are you, have you got a revenue model? Are you going to be making money by offering these modules to you know for access to you know. yeah um one thing if they are the this module also is public in the public platform if you're running on your own business in ontology public platform public chain we will not in charge fee for you you can you can feel free to build any kind of the apps or issue any kind of token sto so no fee token. no fee on the public blockchain yeah, no technical fee or those kind of fee. Only fee is if you do some transaction, they have yeah. very small gas fee. That is uh, ONG, yeah. Okay. That is, that is uh, modules. Okay, that's good to know. So uh, technically you could have a substantial number of dApps on board the public chain. But now let's move across because this is where it gets confusing because of the histories of on-chain. You're, you're clearly talking just about ontology here though. You're not talking about on-chain when we discuss the possibility of the private component. So talk us through that. How is the revenue going to work in the context of the private sector? Of okay. 
Yeah, I understand your means. If some enterprise or some uh, financial institution want to use our modules or framework like ontology to build their own uh, like the private environment, a private environment or, or, or private in, uh, infrastructure, in that case, we will charge some technical service fee or some product fee, like, like et cetera. That is kind of uh, IT service uh, revenue for that part. I but see. for so, public, public part is totally free. I see. So essentially there's two parts. There's the consultancy, the service of IT, the service of, of helping them build out their own yeah. blockchain-centric or blockchain-based uh, yeah. business. Yes. Yeah. So without that, you'd have no revenue. So do you think that having that is imperative to the success of ontology? Do you need to have that revenue? Uh, this revenue compared with ontology ecosystem in mean, long term, maybe you, you cannot say it's, it's kind of uh, large revenue, but mm -hmm. uh, they have other, beside the revenue, they have another important benefit is we can get the real requirements from different real business. They can help us to private those kind of functionality or new product modules component uh, in ontology public platform. Since and all those requirements is from a real business. Yeah. And will there be any revenue regarding related directly to the public chain in that respect in any way? Because you mentioned there's no fee, there's no cost, but is yeah. there any way that that can happen? Transaction fee is the largest revenue for the, for the public platform. Since, for example, if you issue some STO tokens, right, you need to do, do the transaction, you need the exchange. All those transaction exchange will consume the Transaction fee. The transaction fee will reward to all the token holder ecosystem. That mm -hmm. also cancel off revenue for the public. I see. I see. Well, we, I've pushed on that. We'll move on, move on. Now, obviously, you have had a slogan change, and I want to talk to you about why. Because when I last spoke with you, we were talking about things like cross-chain, cross-platform, multi-chain. It was really, really quite confusing. So now you've simplified it down. Now you refer to sharding as a design. We talk about the three buzzwords as uh, scalability, usability and performance. So what exactly are you, you know, in that respect, if we just bring it down to simplistic terms as a slogan? No, actually it's a uh, kind of misunderstanding. Maybe we just currently in uh, recent uh, so weeks we just list the uh, shutting because shutting is an important taking point. We list that. That okay. is uh, is for shutting. That's a slogan is for shutting. Well, oh, I, so I went to your website. That's why, and yeah. I had a good look at what it comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our our actually our slogan is become very simple right now. It's called trust redefined. This is another kind of trust mechanism. That is uh, on told you we are doing. Okay. And as, as you said, those, all those modules, everything relates to the trust for customization and applications, yeah. both in the private and, and public sector. Now, uh, moving across now to some of the, uh, the toolkit, the SDKs, the APIs, uh, you talk about the business component in the enterprise sector, but what are the tools? What are the offerings? What are you going to provide for these businesses to then go and build out? We are private a lot of the, the uh, protocols, like uh, use a VPI or S uh, API or SDK to private different uh, protocols. Like I mentioned, the infrastructure level have different protocols to help you build a different kind of smart contracts and uh, et cetera. And also the DID also kinds of protocols. You can integrate it on told your DID protocol to any kinds of clients or APP application. Uh, from your side and the data exchange as well you can use the protocol to do that and uh, we we actually our strategy more like is uh, is uh, api or interface service that is mm -hmm. our real product that all those kind of interface can integrate it all kinds of application all kinds of scenario you can okay. use the infrastructure yeah well talk us through that what does it actually mean to say that you have that main product of interface uh interface for example we of one, you can build your smart contract and the apps. That is, is uh, interface, important interface based mm -hmm. on that. And you can integrate it on towards your uh, onto ID is decentralized identity. And you can have a, a integrated this protocol. You have a capability can do the global KYC AML from your in your in your in your application easily to do that. Yeah. So, and so it makes data. it easier for me as a business to then utilize yeah. your platform to yeah, make it seamless. Yeah. Like the signature or contract or data exchange, you can open your own data exchange platform 
uh, just a link to the ontology protocols. You, right. can, you, just, you just build the interface, you can. Uh, well, let, let's talk about something quite innovative you've done. You've integrated somewhat private smart contracts, as I understand. Also, that aligns very well with the STO standards you're bringing in. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about your smart contracts first, and then we can discuss the standardization of STOs and the way in which you built that in. Okay. Um, yeah, smart contract, we have a platform, you can build your own uh, smart contract with different uh, business scenario. And based on that, we also build a specific the, the, the protocol for different uh, uh, case, the token protocols, like the OEP4 is kind of uh, the utility token you can mm -hmm. issue. And OEP506, that is STO, security token. Protocol. So you're going to have yeah, two main standards: the utility and the um, the security. Yeah, actually, we have uh, more than twenty protocols, but uh, OEP four and OEP five zero six is more important. That is, uh, five zero six is supported uh, security token usually, and they can support you to do the integrated with different legal system requirements in different areas, different countries to issue the STO very quickly. Sure, so that is protocol to do that. So, so why do it? Why have an STO? Um, and I ask you directly because there's a lot of conjecture right now about the, the, the viability and feasibility of security yeah. token offerings yeah. anyway. So what's yeah. your view on this and what's the stance, you know, particularly in China with regard to the future? Okay. Yeah, uh, from my point of view, security token STO can be a big thing or not. I cannot confirm that because security just, but another big thing is definitely uh, welcome is ATO, asset-based token. Since a lot of assets, maybe a goods or some different assets, digitalized assets or real assets in, in the real world, they need to be digitalized, can be easily do exchange and have a liquidity and it can be confirmed the ownership globally. Mm -hmm. All those things uh, need blockchain to do that. But so if you want to security token, just one kind of assets, so mm. it's a small so part. Can you give us an example? Um, if if F STO is a small part of ATO, could you give us an example of what is an ATO? Because that, that word is, or that acronym is not really used that much yet. Do you know the uh, securitized the, 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 the the assets? Yeah, yeah, the securitized assets in the traditional financial market is an important part. Mm -hmm. A lot of security, for example, the REITs is kind of re rewards return for the list house or the apartments, right? Mm -hmm. And also is some different kind of like the, uh, the, the some uh, products in the game and the, the virtual product in the game and also include some, uh, for example, your return from your, 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 your land money, you have the house and you got return. I see what you're saying. So fractionalizing yeah, those assets. All those things kind of assets. Okay. Yes, even some so, real good, your some the gold or the, some uh, some uh, sleeve. Sure. So in that respect, Li Jung, I apologize for interrupting, but you can then use the concept of the ATO as fractionalizing assets. But can you use the standard that you built for the STO for the A for the ATO? Will they work yeah, together? Uh, yeah. Uh, STO is specific protocols. We also have other protocols to support different kind of assets. So mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, even you have new assets coming, maybe protocol have a, a little bit of difference. We have a protocol can easily support, support you. So how's it, looking? Yeah. how's it looking? How's it looking in terms of interest? That is key things is just oh, I, I need to return to the modules, like the, uh, those modules, the trust collaboration, the ID, data, and the signature. All those mm -hmm. modules is help for the, the process. Since a lot of those kind of assets, insurance, or funding, or exchange, they need a lot of uh, legal requirements in different country or areas. Mm -hmm. You need to do the KYC, do AML, and do, and also need, you need to do the, the data exchange protocol, and also need to do the uh, electronic contract and a signature service. All those things also can be the evidence for some of the legal conflicts. In right, case. so you've been building all the capacity, all the technology, yeah. all of the, yeah. as you say, modules to make this yeah. happen. But what about yeah. also, the way in which your team are engaging with the different jurisdictions, particularly I wanted to ask about the US and Europe, because obviously you've got the complexities of China that you're working through now. Are you making sure that you're compliant in those main hubs of the world for business and for, for the development of ontology? Yeah, we're just a, a, a platform. It's kind of a global platform. We, we actually, all the legal system requirements 
we are we are down under the different uh, the areas mm. by specific requirements. You you need to finish your your legal document. You need to finish your KYC. We just private a protocol technical platform and give you some technical service. Like mm. if you you need you need to do the KYC in the United States, we just private the the connection and the, the connection different KYC mm. uh, verification service private in different area help you to finish the process. Right. So actually we, we don't directly touch the different legal, we, we, we need into license. The license is different insurance platform and also who want to issue the token. They will meet those kind of requirements. I see. So in that respect, you don't have to deal with the headache directly yeah. you know but you mentioned one important thing and that was licensing are you are you currently engaging with discussions with any partners or licensees or anyone who has to cater for this facility and service in these jurisdictions do you have these direct connections yeah. yes we uh, we currently is talk to uh, is currently is talking with a different uh, partner or agency they can issue the asset based token or security token in different areas we all, we will focus on private the uh, protocol and the infrastructure or custodian service, but uh, they will focus on okay how to help clients to finish uh, the legal requirements and uh, those kind of process. Right. And we we are partner together to 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 support the whole process. Okay, so that's a good update. What about the actual tech in terms of decentralization efforts? That's also very important to many people. Currently, you have around 26 nodes. I will assume that's growing. You've done your main net now. How are the, how's the efforts to decentralize going? Okay. Um, currently, we have uh, more than 30 nodes okay, running 30 nodes. in different, 30 nodes and uh, do that. And uh, since our, our the mechanism is, is kind of open policy, Everyone can join and everyone can go, can be the consensus node. And they still have other, the, those kind of uh, uh, individual, uh, they have uh, involved to the go uh, governance models. They put the stake and the voting for different nodes. Mm -hmm. So so actually they have a, uh, behind those kind of the, 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 the 30 nodes, they still have a lot of people is joining to this process. Okay. Uh, we, can, we can do right now is uh, keep the open policy means every nose can come in and every nose can go and everyone can vote the different nodes you like or your mm -hmm. trust. So that is what we are doing right now. Okay, so essentially that there's a lot of democracy built into the function functionality. The nodes are growing. I've really noticed because last time we spoke it was only it was twenty six, which was still something of note. Mm -hmm. You're doing well in that front. And do you anticipate this to substantially grow in the future with the number of nodes or what's the optimal number you're trying to shoot for? Yeah, the notes is we have a policy. For example, they have a kind of reward process, and uh, if the people got a, well, foundation have a reward, and if currently we are the apps every month, the apps is growing, and more and more transaction fee will be be, be uh, every month. When mm -hmm. the transaction fees keep growing, and we are attract more and more nodes join because they can got benefits, they can got even got profits to be a nodes to join the consensus node. So the long term, I believe, once your ecosystem enlarged, more and more nodes will join. The right. Process. Well, we'll hold you to that. So next time we we catch up, <laughs> hopefully you've got more nodes again, and that is working because you have four more than we spoke. Now, what about things, technology updates like Wasm with the WebAssembly, and that's another one as well I want to talk to you about called, is it Cyano or Ciano? I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but these are technical mm. developments and it's um, C-Y-A-N-O. Mm. You, can you tell us a bit about that as well? Okay. Uh, Wasm the, 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 is a kind of smart contract platform. We have a, well, almost have down those parts. And in the long term, we, we can be, we want to be a full platform. Full platform means we can support different kind of smart contract on one platform mm -hmm. included that means you can use all kinds of language to running to build your smart contracts and running on your ontology that is uh, we are doing right now Continue we already supports many kinds of mainstream language Python, java go and uh, javascript you can what build about what about there. solidity solidity right uh, yeah. Solidity is more focused on the Ethereum platform, mm. the EVM. We already have a capability to integrate the EVM. Just uh, uh, since we want to people encourage people to use more 
mainstream language to do that. I so see. next phase, we will Watson can support C and C++ and Rust to do that. Yeah. Mm, that's quite substantial. So congratulations, because that's a lot of different languages. And, and again, not to FOMO, but you need to have that if you want to be viable in this industry. You can't just mm -hmm. have one uh, developing language that is, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. For the, simply for uh, the access. Yeah, in, in this year, we definitely will support all kinds of mainstream language. We mm. will definitely do that because we already finished that. So in that respect, how is the develop, developer community going and the stats? I've noticed that in the social side, that's growing, but are more developers actually picking up the toolkits and utilizing them to build? Yeah, uh, the technical community uh, currently, we, in this quarter, we have increased uh, more than 20%. Currently, uh, in China and globally, we have uh, uh, one, more than 1,000 technical community in our group, Discord and WeChat technical group. And if you check our website, we have a Bunter program and lots of and the, uh, the, the decades the, those kind of projects are many uh, the over the, the one thing is a uh, lot of projects is Bunter program is finished uh, I think it's more than 30 project is finished by technical community they have okay. their own uh, GitHub and uh, they have uh, finished a lot of uh, specific uh, functionality like you mentioned the wallet Ciano also is from technical community yeah I think it grows very well and uh, next phase we will uh, this year we have an important marketing strategy called go global is yes, we we want to be a global branding marketing in different platform we hope the the technical company can can, can keep going so, so go global i imagine there's going to be an announcement of that so siano is the wallet so how yeah. easy is it is to use these wallet updates the reason why i ask is because i've gone through and checked these updates of january uh, of, that was one of them what's the feedback been and you know uh, is the technology getting easy to use and interact with yeah, for some important uh, the, uh, community project like Ciano or the other kind of pro community project, we also will put resource, uh, our core team resource to support them together, to maintain, to enhancement, to, to, to do the improvement. Like Ciano, currently we have the core, bu core builder, uh, the, the, the teamwork uh, group uh, from mm -hmm. our core team and from the community, we will maintain the, the, the wallet together and okay. to keep the enhancements almost every week. Right, okay. So just to clarify again, you develop, you're develop. you making movements in terms of toolkit development, you're, uh, all the different components are coming together. I would imagine yeah. that as you move out, this will be a constant thing though, each time we talk, that you'll continually build more components, more tools. Is that yeah. gonna be a consistent thing you think right throughout the development in the years ahead for ontology? Yes, um, currently the technical community is built, uh, like you mentioned, the tools or the modules. And uh, since we, ha we already have a very uh, strong infrastructure right now, lots of modules coming. So in this year, our, our strategy will encourage technical community to build more different kind of application uh, linked to a different scenario. Mm. That is so where we have just launched a new D app, D ontology D app store the mechanism, they have a lot of incentive mechanism, long-term incentive mechanism to, to support the developer to build different kind of the apps or the, or the uh, token or protocols based on okay. ontology. So, so there's rewards for the developer directly. How will those rewards happen? Will they be through the token? Uh, one thing is they can share the transaction fee with platform. We have an agreement about the consensus models and we will do upgrade the, the they, for example, the fifty percent tracing fee will reward to the developer directly if you build some DApps running on that. Mm. And also, we have the if you have a top ranking, the top level, uh, top fifty the DApps, and you also will get reward from Ontology Foundation. Yeah, this is okay. also. Very so big this, reward. Yeah. This could perhaps be the killer approach rather than the killer app by getting apps onto your platform, really build yeah. an ecosystem, which obviously is really important. Now, I want to talk to you about, you mentioned before Ethereum. I know you're cross-chain compatible there. Mm -hmm. But when we last spoke, you hinted to more coming. You know, that, you know, you're planning out ways to interoperate or to allow mm -hmm. for things like Hyperledger, for example, or EOS. So give us an update mm -hmm. there with cross-platform potential. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we have the uh, cross protocol right now is for the cross uh, assets to exchange assets and the data. And uh, next phase, we will have a cross protocol to for the cons uh, different consensus process. Mm -hmm. Like actually shedding also included those kind of cross cross blockchain to do that. And uh, uh, in currently, I, I haven't seen a lot of scenario need a cross to the big platform. For example, cross ontology to the Ethereum. Mm. No, uh, still have no those kind of uh, requirements coming because most most scenarios they can run in, in one platform are already enough to support a current yeah. scenario. So, so maybe you're next phase we're not really focused on really engaging in that cross -cloud. Yeah, we 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 focus on cross in our ecosystem. We still have cross chain multiple chain to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, currently we will not directly focus on cross to the other blockchain. Uh, if some requirements coming we will, we will move to I see. Well. So if they knock on your door, you'll listen. What about your runway, Jun Lee, with regard to money? Now, you raised a substantial lot of money. You definitely cashed that out into Fiat. When we last spoke, you made that clear. How much have you got left for this team? Because you have a very large team. Yeah, I can promise this. We still, uh, we, we, we at least can support uh, more than three years from now so i think we, we have enough the, 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 the funding and it can support mm -hmm. us to to keep push the ont um, ontology ecosystem so that is maybe we can be <coughs> a, a one of the most sustainable projects in the current public chain platform right so, and and is it enough in that respect like do you think that three years is enough of time frame given the bear market given that we are facing such an illiquid scenario yeah, in currently our, our funding, our own funding can support this part, but we still have, a, just you, you check the allocation for the ontology, we still mm -hmm. have the, around the 20 to 30, of course, country in the lock period. I believe this kind of funding can support you actually more than five years, more uh, five years. And almost, that means you almost can, if the marketing still, even in currently bad market, you still have the five or the 10 years can be sustainable enough for your core team. I, I think it's longer enough. Another after that, you still can, okay, in that time, you already become very strong platform, have lots of module and very strong, a lot of business running on that. You can have a lot of additional service can, can, can run on that. And even in that time, after 10 years, even as the project without core team, they still can run it by themselves, like like a like a DAO. Uh, they can run it very good mm -hmm. in their time because already become very very stable and a strong platform. Right. So you you're confident that you have enough money to to last out this bear market. That's good to hear. Now I want to talk to you a little bit more about the money in which the team can, or rather the the value of the token and how that relates to access for the team. Because some teams have a very short lockup period and they can access the token far too early, in my opinion. In your case, how can we ensure that the team's there for the long haul? Are they incentivized to stay because of the token uh, lockup plan? Yeah, yeah. Our funding for the core team is uh, um, the funding. Most funding is uh, is from uh, Fiat. So they have no those kind of impact for the team incentive. Mm -hmm. And then even, even those kind of token incentive, we also can, can be adjusted according to the market price for the teams. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing, since the bad market, almost uh, no matter technical uh, uh, members or some marketing members, um, in currently they need to choose the, the, the the stable and the good project to join because they, they actually have no a lot of opportunity right now mm -hmm. in the bad market. So Ontology uh, especially is one of the good opportunity, especially in China. So we still have, a, we, we still keep growth for the team. Every week we have a new member join. And right. the other project country is many, a lot of projects is doing laying off a lot of members. Kind okay. Of. I, I wanted to talk to you about that with regard to the team growth. Is it consistently growing or, or are you in fact you know, reducing it no. down in number because uh, of the bit? We are almost is only one or two projects right now is keep growing every week. Hmm. I know a lot of project is uh, lay off and cut down more than half. Even some project is more than 70 members 
is uh, is uh, removed. Yes, a good example was Steemit and one of the well-known yeah. uh, social platforms. They were they really cut down. Um, Nebulous really cut down. Seventy percent, I understand, of their own workforce. So, yeah. how are you doing that? How are you actually growing in a bear? Yeah, because we have uh, uh, many different business can support us. Like we have, we we just opened our custodian service, and we also have ours. Uh, uh, just mentioned technical service, enterprise level service, all those kind of service and revenue, and uh, and uh, of of course, including all the funding we are before doing the funding, we have a lot of uh, financial arrangement to keep us. We can keep growing, and uh, to as also can open more business and uh, and got more revenue. So you're one of very very few blockchain cent, uh, startups or black blockchain based. Um, that are producing revenue right now. That's pretty important, especially in China. Is that, do you release that information to the public? What's the degree of transparency for the revenue that you do produce? Uh, and is that month in, month out, or month on month out growing? Uh, because obviously it's been quite new that you've started to really show, yeah. Tech, show that you uh, Yeah, at least the, 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 the past two years, we are revenue, technical service revenue is closing and uh, for this part. And uh, since that is private uh, section uh, for this part, and uh, we will not announce all the revenue for this part. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, all the public chain part, we, we have a oh. key. Respectfully, here's a tough question. So pull your sleeves up for this one, Jun Lee, because you mentioned private, you mentioned revenue is very strong and that you're growing. That's what we want to hear. But for a utility buyer, for someone who's looking at it as a, from a pre-utility standpoint for the future of, of ontology, obviously correlations are so important. Talk us through that. How can this token, this token system, I mean, this is where we talk about tokenomics, how can they ensure that that, that has value that's directly connected with your business growth if right now the token value has been dropping? Mm -hmm. um, the token is depend on your token design, the mechanism design. Just as I mentioned, is, uh, if you review currently <clears throat> more and more application or token and uh, running on uh, eco, uh, the, the system, almost every, every week, every month is grows. And more and more transaction, you're running on that. Mm -hmm. So last year we, we already have uh, several million transactions in ontology platform. Every transaction have a gas fee. All those gas fee is returned to our ho token holder, ONT token holder. Mm -hmm. That is long term benefits for them. Okay, if so the gas fee yeah, should yeah. bolster the whole ecosystem and therefore the price it should. But we still yeah. need to discuss this further because right now you're, you're doing transactions through the private sector, you're producing revenue, there's things happening. But yeah. once again, if I look at the charts of the value on, uh, sorry, of ontology, do they yeah. correlate? Um, the, the, the private technical service is depend on the, the this is mostly this kind of technical uh, service and technical support as part. And all those modules we built, we will not do any, any open, open sourcing things. All those built the modules will move to the ontology public platform, private service to do that. Okay. For example, a lot of modules we actually before is building for some enterprise or the financial institution. But uh, finally, we move those kind of modules to the public chain to help more the apps on the different applications. Has that, is, has that yeah. happened yet or will that happen? Already happened, like the decentralized identity before we are doing that for government. Mm. But finally, we moved to the public blockchain. And mm. currently, a lot of people running the apps or some application running on ontology is use our the, the, the KYC. Right. So, just to be clear, I want to really get this clear with regard to the value of the token. Is it fair to say that it's not just that public component, though? If the, because obviously on the public blockchain, there's going to be a, a vast number of dApps and thus the transaction fees are going to continually grow. But is yeah. it fair to say that on the other side, because of the token uh, use in that context, everyone who utilizes the token should technically be building the value of the ecosystem and thus the token? Or is it just in this public part where the, you know, the, the value should flourish? Um, the every value, our, our technical service value also will link to the public blockchain. For example, mm -hmm. a lot of public service in the initial phase, they are doing public service, like the full sense loyalty points, right? In the initial phase, first step, they are doing the uh, private uh, environment to build that. 
And the second state, they will move to the public blockchain to mm -hmm. running on that. Okay. That is almost, so that is finally all its benefit or cost reward for the public chain environment and finally reward to the token holder. Okay, so talk us through then now how you reason the market situation. You mentioned the bear, and then mm -hmm. if we talk just on the price that we literally see and, and the graph and how it's mm -hmm. been a trajectory downward uh, <coughs> despite your growth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, country is bad market definitely. Just uh, since the liquidity issues in the uh, whole financial market, actually, I mean, include all financial market, not only the token part, is uh, stock part also is in China. The stock market also is going down very very quickly right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, my point of view, they still have uh, need uh, one or two years can be recover again, and. Uh, before that, uh, I think uh, lots of projects will, will disappear or just closed mm -hmm. and uh, also have no uh, loss, will not have uh, lots of pro new projects coming because of bad market. So that depends on what kind of project will be sustainable in that time. So are you and confident when, that you're not one of those that are going to die? Of course, uh, we, we're confident we can be sustainable in the long term. Just I mentioned, we can support at five, uh, three or five years. And all that time, actually know a lot of platform in the market. Then if you want to do investment or the other things, the only few target you can choose. Mm. That is just like the internet pub, the, the break, and the, when you return, there's some important platform mm. we're coming. So right. what's it going to take then? If we're in a bear and you're talking a few years ahead uh, for you know a, a change in the pace substantially, then mm. you know what what in the interim because you're still building business. So it's important we understand if you're still continually month on month out building out revenue, mm. how can we? Why should we not expect that the token should reflect this growth despite the bear? Okay, um, one thing is. Uh, um, one thing I can uh, the, the, uh, make sure is that the apps and the ecosystem will keep growing every month. We'll have a new coming is for that. And every year, just if you check our website or GitHub, we have a very clear roadmap in technical part and the ecosystem part. We currently, we also is follow all kinds of uh, roadmap doing right now. Mm -hmm. And all those people, maybe some people is in our community, some people is just the investor. They can check our roadmap and, uh, and also check out our progress every week. And uh, can, okay, they can have their own evaluation about mm -hmm. the, the value in the whole ecosystem. And okay. the, Sure. And obviously, if you want to know more, you can go to those different resources that Jun Lee is talking about. Now, I want to talk to you about the focus on specific verticals with regard to dApps. Now, recently, there was an announcement that you had uh, released uh, up to 12, I believe, uh, in various verticals. What I noticed was that layer two solutions were a big thing for you in investment wise, and also gaming, gambling, those verticals as well. So talk us through, you know, why you're choosing these and, and what's what the plan is yeah uh, uh, layer two is quite important since um, they can support a uh, lot of the uh, high frequency transaction scenario like uh, some game need a high frequency and some application uh, uh, financial application need those kind of labor that is uh, infrastructure technical uh, preparation for this part another actually if you check the ontology the the, 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 the apps we almost have uh, uh, the apps in all kinds of different scenarios. Not only game, like US is most game and gambling. We, of mm. course, we have the game and gambling, yeah, of course. Yes, and yeah. currently, they still have an important part. But we also have other kinds of different the apps. We want to show, build the example in different mm. industry first. And the people can say, OK, uh, ontology in ontology, I can do this, and also I can do that. It's I think you raise a really important word, and that is do. So yeah. these dApps do stuff. That's what I really want to get from you, because uh, technically, uh, we've, well, we've seen a lot of superficial connections and announcements, a lot of hype, a lot of superficial partnerships between different projects. Mm -hmm. But are you saying that everything that you're doing is driven, uh, is focused on trying to drive utility, trying to drive usability and mm -hmm. uh, movement into the mainstream? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That is why we built some, even some uh, cooperation with different uh, industry projects 
uh, even some cooperation include some uh, investment as well. Mm -hmm. And build a different we, uh, in the first stage, we want to build different kind of example or showcase in different industry that people know, okay, I can build this one. Mm. Well, I noticed that you partnered with CERTIK or CERTIC and also with Top Network. They're two prominent projects right now. Mm. Uh, is this some of the reasoning behind it? Because <coughs> Uh, my understanding is that top is one of the layer two solutions. So is that all designed to really build out the, the productivity and the usability? Yeah, we just, uh, we have a lot of technical uh, the, the meeting with uh, top network, even in, in this week as well. And mm -hmm. uh, we will build the layer two in Q, uh, this quarter or next one, in, in the uh, uh, Q2 and Q1. Mm -hmm. and top, top network will be one kind of layer two ontology. Is more focused on communi communication scenario, and mm. can, that can help different DApps can use those kind of communication layer to can easily to do the communication uh, transaction and different services. Right, and I, I ask you this because that was substantial because they have the VPN, they have Zoom, you know, yeah. technologies behind. That's really quite substantial for the potential of yeah. both of you, I think. So yeah. that's why I did ask that because again, I checked with them; they have revenue as well already. Uh, yeah. the potential and the user base, substantial yeah. user base. So you must be excited about these kinds of relationships. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think it's, it's a very kind of solid platform. That's mm. Those kind of layer two not only can support the top network, also can provide a lot of service for the other DApps. And right. besides that, we also work together with Max Marvel to build a layer two for the game. Uh, the, the okay, platform. so an actual yeah. gaming platform. Yeah, gaming platform, the gaming, the game or the new game, the app can use those kind of layer too. Mm. You can build a very high, high transaction game scenario as well. Sure. Now, there's a lot of debate about NFTs of the non-fungible token model, uh, whether or not they're even going to work. Uh, some of the experts say that there'll still always be a need for centralized games, gaming uh, designers to have complete control and proprietary uh, oversight. Do you think that this is going to work? Do you think N uh, NFTs are going to be something? Because there's a lot of talk about it right across the world right now in the world of gaming. Uh, currently, is uh, cannot confirm this right now. All those gaming, to be honest, currently most game uh, on blockchain, they actually can work without blockchain as well. Yes. <laughs> they can set a different token. So currently, it's kind of uh, it's, uh, in the very initial stage. So all the modules need to be confirmed or even redesigned again. Mm. So currently we are doing a lot of the apps that just kind of move the existing games to the blockchain and a link to some token. Um, that is, I think it's just the first step. In right. that step, you need to design more. Is NFT can be workable or not? Um, need, need to confirm again. I can mm. confirm. I appreciate your honesty about that. Now, yeah. there are some challenges I do want to pose to you. One of them is the question of uh, DAP d distinctions between you and NEO. Because mm. I noticed that one of the games, as we talk about, was recently released. Uh, Chica Crypto actually raised this issue publicly, and that was Hyper Dragon. Now, Hyper Dragon is a game, essentially, that we've also seen similar situations arise in NEO. So, can you tell us, you know, because I want to go deep into this discussion of the two, of NEO and Autology later, but why would you do that? Why would you have a game that comes out that, you know, can cater for the needs of Ontology when NEO are also doing similar things? Uh, a uh, game is in public form. Game just one one kinds of the uh, DApps in ontology. Actually, our official will have not not directly to build the game for this part. Mm -hmm. Some game, for example, they want to do, build some uh, the KYC process, and some uh, want to use uh, community and marketing. They mm -hmm. work together with ontology. And actually, they, they in the same time they support the uh, EO, uh, EOS or Neo as well. So okay. almost all kind of game is kind of close platform. Ontology is just one of platform they are using. Actually, right. for ourselves, we are more focused on this real business case like STO, like the supply uh, financial or some of the supply chain. That is our core team more focused on. I see. So you're really going for the much more uh, wider adoption factor yeah, because you want yeah. to get a plot. For the so long term, uh, yeah, maybe the game is uh, is kind of not so close to the blockchain in the initial phase. Yes, but long term is okay. 
outcome. Well, talk us through now your strategy for mass adoption. Obviously, you have money in the bank. Are you, are you rolling out strategies now to really get the, the, the name of ontology out there in China or even you know, beyond globally? Is that relevant right now or are you still just building and focusing on the tech? Um, uh, we, tech is just one pass. We also have a, 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 a very good BD team, a business development team and a strategy to do that. We also we definitely will to, to be exposed to different scenarios. Are they doing a good job though? Are they doing a good job to get the message out? Do you think people are hearing about? I think this country is uh, uh, in the initial stage. It's quite good. They already built a lot of link discussion and the MOU with mm. different industry uh, scenarios. But mm. actually, all those scenarios move to the public blockchain and decentralized service is actually is quite challenging things or difficult things. That is not can, okay in the short term. I can have a lot of those kind of application running. It's not possible. They need, right. a, they need a time to do that. But every important in those kind of traditional application running on public blockchain, they will be involved a lot of new users. The, new, the users before is not a token holder. They are, they are totally new users from a different industry. I that see. Many, many good for the whole industry. So it's really yeah. about you want to expand the complete the reach of ontology yeah. to new yeah. users, to new people, to new markets. Yeah. Understand. So in that respect as well, I wanted to ask you, given that you're in China, are you concerned at all about the stance that the government's taken? Because there's been an argument posed by the community that essentially, you know, you need to have government connections now. You know, if you really want to be prominent, if you really want to be a force reckoned with. Do you need that? In fact, do you need to have a government connection uh, to really be viable? And yeah. I understand your means. Is as a service provider, all kind of the apps or application running on ontology, we want to them to follow different kind of legal system. Not only in China, actually. Even in some application, you want to the apps ontology. You provide a service to the uh, United States citizens, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you also need to follow United States the legal requirements. That is where I encourage people and I encourage those kind of partners to do that. We right. also, for ourselves, if we provide some service, we also will follow this policy as well. And Jun Lee, obviously we could talk for hours, but I want to get down into some of the deep discussions about NEO. I'd like to give a shout out to Srimal from my, the Telegram that, uh, that he wrote quite a long list of questions. I'm going to go through them with you. Now, one of them that uh, he asked was specifically, what is the relationship between NEO and Autology? Give us a really clear understanding because a lot of people just don't get it. And I certainly can, don't, I have to admit, because it changes. The narrative changes all the time. Mm. Uh, uh, one, the first of all is they are the separate team, no overlap. That is zero overlap. No zero overlap. Yeah, zero overlap. That mm. I want to clarify. And also, uh, we have actually we have a different. All both is public blockchain, but I have mm. a different strategy. On top, just I mentioned, we are more focused on the real business scenario. That's why we build lots of components to do that. Mm. Okay. So, so just to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're saying there's no overlap. But the problem with that is that when we spoke before, there was discussion at that time about having some collaboration with standards, mm -hmm. uh, especially with regard to enterprise in that business scenario. Why has that changed? What, why is it no longer that, that possibility is there? No, I mean, no overlap is, uh, is the team is totally separated. It's not just okay, so the teams. But we have a cooperation. In the technical cooperation, for example, we have a small contract, we have a cooperation, the call team, a, a team group to do that. So, mm -hmm. but the running is different team running. I see. So the business operation, the whole entity is totally distinct. Let's go back then and apologize if I've confused you uh, to the ways that you are collaborating. Tell, tell us what you actually do together. Uh, currently, we have a, a team group who is doing the smart contract investment. Uh, not investment, in investigations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are doing those kind of smart contract, build the smart contracts and the mechanism to those kind of team uh, technical cooperation mm -hmm. in this point. Can, can I ask you why? Because obviously Hong Fei is uh, you know, the co-founder. He is an executive in all different respects, on on-chain and in ontology, and in, uh, he's involved with NGC, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I would assume as well. So his fingers are in many pies. He's very busy. Mm -hmm. 
what, what's the incentive for you to both collaborate in this way? And why not just be completely separate and, and focus on your own business and your own platform and your own, what's the core value of why you want to build these standards together? Uh, you mean collaboration with Neil? Yes. Uh, benefit is we have the same smart contract strategy. Uh, this kind of uh, alignment is because, for example, we we are okay. We want to use. Uh, we all have a vision, technical visions. Want to more and more mainstream language can build smart contract. That is why we do the technical cooperation. Uh, the business side, yeah. Okay. Well, what about with regard to the rumor, and we've heard this, and I need to ask you again, I apologize, but there was a rumor that people were migrating from Neo right across to Ontology. Can you confirm this real situation? What actually did happen and what is happening with regard to... You mean local? people move to Ontology from yes. Neo? Yeah. No, no one, no one, no just kind of move. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we did, I have asked, so I just want to make, confirm that for... Yeah all of the listeners. Now, another question that's been asked also, Jun Lee, is with regard to the go-to platform, the one that really has the people's attention as the main chain. Is it fair to say that you've taken a lot of the attention away from Neo? You know, and was that even deliberate or what was the strategy or was it just accidental? Now, part of your question is why, why Neo? What, what you mean? Oh, okay, I'll ask it again. Hmm. Oh, okay, I'll try and think of how I can explain it. Okay. Another thing that's also been raised, Jun Lee, is the success of ontology. With regard to a lot of the attention, a lot of the interest really moved um, when you emerged. It, and Neo obviously is, is, is struggling a little bit at the moment. We see that in the way it's progressed. It could be because of the bear. But a lot of people are saying that Ont is the better, newer, upgraded version of Neo. So I wanted you to ask you to comment on those concepts and whether or not you agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I mentioned is uh, um, not. Uh, I want to uh, emphasize again is not kind of more big, uh, more better or advanced new. No, they have a totally different architecture and uh, and the technical vision. If you if you uh, check that is new just released uh, 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 version three the vision technical vision in yes. vision also includes uh, many specific technical uh, progress as well. So ontology and Neo is two different kind of architecture to uh, support different kind of scenario directions. So that is uh, technical have a different uh, specific technical directions. So mm -hmm. actually it's not kind of a replacement or some, uh, yeah. Right, but the problem is obviously one of the anomalies is that you both have, you want to onboard DATS, you both have ecosystems, you have Ont Labs, Ontology Labs, and obviously Ont Neo wants to build its own ecosystem more and more. So sometimes it's really confusing for people because we don't understand why sometimes some of your DApps are of sim sim similar design in terms of music or in gaming. Do you, ever, do you ever sort of have that issue where you have to explain that to other people where people just don't understand <clears throat> Yeah. Why it looks since like we are since we are both uh, public chain have the both similar uh, the organization the mechanism, and uh, a lot of the apps they can choose. Okay, I use this platform or another platform. This just kind of uh, even right now, neo neo platform still have more the apps than ontology uh, definitely, and uh, they just different kind of the developers. Uh, Choose. We cannot. Okay, falsely. Okay, you can. Those kind of application you have to build on Neo, or those kind of application you have to build on Ontology. We mm -hmm. cannot falsely to do that. We just encourage people. Okay, we have sure. those kind. Of, we, we sure. Have and you, you you keep mentioning that the different the the whole premise is different scenarios, and you're focused on yeah. business scenarios. But yeah. in that respect, DATS I would assume are also part of building out the ecosystem and the business of Neo, because mm -hmm. obviously they want to be sustainable for the long term. So some of the scenarios do overlap and that's why it is a little confusing. But for the most part, uh, is it fair to say that your fundamental scenario is really building out the, 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 the suite of services and products for a wider, a wider adoption in the, the customization of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what we are looking for. Actually, this whole core team of ontology is more focused on that part. Build okay. the, 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 yeah, this part. Right, okay. Now, I want to talk about Hong Fei specifically. Now, he, for a time, went very quiet. And I will talk to him about this. It was very unusual. Uh, he didn't really stop engaging in a lot of act social activities, a lot of 
What was the reasoning from your position? Because he was heavily involved with you. Uh, there was a lot of discussions consistently, but then suddenly things went different. You know, what's your position on that? What's your view? Yeah, from my view, I, he still attend a lot of uh, event and do presentation. Last okay. week, he just do presentation in Binance conference. Yeah, he's still as a uh, for Neo as a Neo founder as well. And uh, is this still busy for Neo and on chain as well? Right? So he's solely he's solely and wholly with Neo. He's not really involved with ontology. Yeah, they, 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 they don't involve ontology directly. They just right. uh, yeah yeah still focus on Neo and on chain. Yeah. Okay, and can we expect that he'll continue to have a you know separate role in Neo and and you'll lead out the ontology? Yes, yes. He is uh, still focused on Neo and I lead the ontology. And mm -hmm. of course, in on chain, we have some cooperation for some on chain business as well. Yeah. Yes, and he's also the CEO of that as well. Yeah. Now, we talked about all of the, and I appreciate how transparent you've been about everything. Uh, Neo DevCon's coming up. Uh, for events, I want to talk to you about a few things. Uh, Harvard is coming for you, a gaming events in Shanghai. You've also got blockchain lab events in Tokyo. So lots happening in the next few months for you. Yeah. yeah. You know, what are you thinking about these in terms of development, in terms of, uh, you know, the projections for more growth for ontology? Yeah, uh, in this year, we will be just mentioned the go global strategy where we will have a build more event and to to do more communication with global community as well and mm -hmm. to build more partners, global partners in different countries. That is our strategy. So we will, uh, in this year, we will in more focus on marketing and BD because we have a very strong technical uh, platform right now and mm. uh, in this year we are more focused on marketing and BD to enlarge ontology ecosystem. Okay so in that respect can you talk us through some of the examples uh, of partnerships that you have forged so the community know. Uh, you mentioned that you can't disclose all of the financials but give us some indicators of the kinds of partners that you have forged and that you're planning on uh, working with in the near future. <clears throat> yeah, first, uh, first of all, of course, Ontology have a partnership with all kinds of top level uh, uh, the capitals that mm. people already know. Mm. Yes, those, the VCs. Yeah, all those uh, portfolios will, will have the uh, potential of cooperation uh, mm. with Ontology as well. That's one thing. And also we will build some uh, cooperation in different uh, the, the industry, like some uh, STO agency in globally, and also include some uh, financial institutional. They want to build a decentralized financial service on project. We will, we will um, like to build those kind of partnership globally to do right. that. So they're quite big, those initiatives, because as you said, if you're going global and you're building these agencies, you're going to have to have offices, you're going to have to have a huge, uh, you know, uh, means in which you can actualize this for in the real, real scenario and real world context. So you've got a lot of work ahead. Are you confident that you can pull it off though, given that there's so much to do, you've got so many different components and are you going to expect to expand your team and build this yeah. in 2019? From our side, we just focus on infrastructure and product level. All those products, we will have the different professional partners in different industries. They were mm -hmm. doing the application level and the, 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 the operation level. So right. also, of course, if those kind of process on business have profits, we also want, okay, we also partner, they also can go to profits in the operation or something. We will more focus on infrastructure and product. And all those kind of infrastructure can be reusable to support. That means we actually not, uh, not a very large human resource to, to support that. We just build a different wow. partnership in different industry. Sure. Now, I really appreciate it. Everything you've, you've explained today, it's been a really long com conversation. Also, uh, if you'd like to know more, uh, you can go and engage with the different social uh, channels. There's Medium, there's Twitter, there's Telegram, there's a lot that's going on for uh, ontology. I noticed also that there's a, a very strong community, just generally the way in which that they're interacting. What would you like to say to them, you know, given that they're so active and they're so engaged in what essentially you're building? Yeah, one thing is ontology currently already ready to support all kind of decentralized scenario. So welcome you build all kinds of dApps or, or some uh, tokens insurance or STO or some all kinds of scenario build ontology. We will provide your specific technical service and ecosystem service. Welcome you to our community.
Yeah. Thank you very much, Jun Lee, for explaining all of that. Now, just one final point, and I think this is probably the most important uh, to the community, and that is, is it fair to say you would do uh, expect long term and even in the short term next few, let's say, months and years, that we're going to see a change given all the work you're putting in? We're going to see a change in uh, fundamentally the utility. Yeah, uh, for the short terms, uh, especially this year, where uh, I can make sure they have a different kind of scenario uh, where running ontology. Different kind of means since different industry from not only game or gambling, still have a new case where running ontology. We have a confidence to, to reach that. Absolutely. So long term, long term, I believe ontology can be one of important infrastructure platform to support decentralized uh, the, the business uh, in the long term. Yeah. Right. And so you've got a you've got a short term plan to cater for the needs yeah. of the market. You've got a long term plan. Your goal is to go global, as you said, and you really want to be one of those fundamental modularized uh, platforms to really yeah. showcase what you can do in a decentralized context for not just business, but more importantly, the customization feature for you know for the globe. So yeah. it's been really, really interesting talking to you. Thank you very much yeah. for your time. And hopefully yeah. we can catch up um, either at DevCon if I'm attending or later on down the track if you're not too busy. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thanks. No worries. Thanks, mate.